All right, so for about a year, we've been storing this. It's a 1976 Toyota Land Cruiser FJ55. It's like the perfect family haul and wagon. It's like it was made to go on a JK frame. All right, so we're finally getting back to work on the JK. Working on the front end, we've got to figure out the top link, get this axle out, weld it all up. We've got to get steering in it. The goal, we got to have that Bronco on this lift very, very soon, because we're going to be working on gears. Where are we at? 77, both sides. So what we're doing is we're using our bleep and Jeep alignment tools, and we're just making sure that the axle's square. Now we're going to get a center point measurement for our drag link. We're going to put it together and put it on. What our plan is going to be, we're going to get the wheels and tires on this, get the bump stops, get the steering in it, and we're going to roll this frame over there, bring that vehicle over here, lift that vehicle up here, because we got some Yukon gear and axle stuff coming. We're going to be putting Grizzly lockers, 538 gears, and all the good stuff into the Bronx Star. Is there instructions? There's no instructions, so we don't have pictures. We're trying to figure out how our fusion axle steering works. So I might just have to... I won't say like that. I might just have to ask Kate from Fusion. We've got to send her a fax. I won't say it goes just like there. Just like that. All right, I'm a total idiot. Do you have a diagram or something how the steering goes together for this Dana 60? There's so many pieces and I don't know where they all go. I just had to send a fax over to Kate at Fusion Axles to figure out how our steering goes together because I'm a little bit incompetent. So you see this ring? That fits perfect where it covers that ring perfectly. There's no way. It acts like a lock for the gem nut. There's no way that goes there. Hillbilly is thinking that that goes there. We're thinking it's got to be a lock ring. And once you get the instruct diagram, it's not the right spot. Yes, it's turned back out. Probably true. Hillbilly's going to go start working on the Bronx Star. And once I get this figured out, I'll show you what I figure out. It's not figure out that I'm right. Okay, I just finished welding up the brackets on the axle. I got one left on the axle for the links. All the brackets on the frame are welded. So the back axle suspension is about done. After this bracket, all I gotta do is just finish welding up on the inside of the strut towers, and then I'll be done. So these tie rods, this is actually two and a half ton steering. So these are like normal Chrysler ball joints that go into the ends of these. We call them 727 ball joints. We use a lot of these in the derby world. But in the off-road world, they're tie rods. We don't want to be wrecking these, but we're going to screw them in. And then I'm going to extend this out. So the nice thing about a right and left hand thread tie rods, you just spin it one way and it goes bigger or it goes smaller. All right, we're dead on, 59 and 5 8. So I'm going to put the jam nuts. We're going to hope for the best. And then when we get our diagram on how this stuff works, we'll put it all together correctly. We'll take it all apart. We'll take it all back apart. <laughs> this is why you measure stuff. Just like that, goes right in. Now we have our steering. So all I'm gonna do is put these castle nuts on. I'm not gonna tighten them up. They're just temporary to hold the steering where it needs to be so that when we move this over to the other side, the tires stay together. All right, so my next task at hand, to figure out how to make this top hat bracket work. Obviously, I gotta take it out. Ugh, that was hard. We got this ear. I'm assuming that is for a factory something for an upper link, but this isn't a factory something. It's a fully custom off-road JK crawler. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off. And then I've got to figure out how to make a truss. And then I gotta cut this up and use it somehow. Probably cut the ears off. And I'll make this to where it can mount onto my, my upper truss that I built. I'm gonna start hacking up this axle so we can get some cardboard CAD drawings made up. This was a really good idea in theory, but now I've cut myself into I've cut myself into a pickle. Now I got to cut out of it. Oh! Now I've cut half the ear off with my Milwaukee bandsaw. Now I've got to cut it down lower. So now I think I can get in there with a sawzall with a good blade, finish cutting it off. So what he was saying is it was a good idea until it wasn't. Yeah, pretty much. The other blade cut so much faster. Now I'm going to cut this one flat. That stinks. Yep, the best we got. Start blowing. All right, so that's at least down enough. What I think we need to do is build a piece that comes up here and then straight across and then right down. But we got to account for this airline and also this vent tube. We'll have to take those into account in our, in our CAD drawing. All right, so we're getting some cardboard CAD drawings figured out. And then we're going to take this, transfer it into the plasma table, cut it out of some 3 8 plate that I've got and build an upper truss. So I've got this side and I've got the top hat figured out. Now I've just got to figure out the other side that goes down, how we're going to do that. All right, so I've transferred my CAD drawings into the computer software. I'm going to cut these out. Depending on how well it is when I weld it together, I may just 
leave it at that. I might take it and get a new one bent. So we're gonna kind of plan for both. For now, we're gonna cut three pieces out. It's those, and we're gonna see if it's gonna work. So we've got that all nice and squared up and ground and ready to go right on top of that. Got our plate over here. We're gonna save this as a DXF file. All right, so he's getting his safety glasses on. We're saving this. We're gonna open up the other, our nesting program. Then we're gonna transfer it over to the plastic table and we're gonna get this thing cut. I'm gonna find my ex, oh, thanks bud. You're always looking out for me. Got this into Mach 3 loader. Got it all set. We're gonna hit the plate button. We're gonna hit run and watch it cut it out. We've got this all cut out. I'm gonna grab some gloves, get this out of the other metal and go see how it fits. This is the cool thing about a CAD program and a plasma cutter makes light work and makes these things look awesome. The only thing better is a laser. We'll work with what we got. All right, so I wanna point something out. Milwaukee sent me this super awesome color correction light. Not only is it super, super bright and awesome, it has a super powerful magnet. Rather than grabbing pliers or burning my hands. So you fooled him, you said he's getting pliers. I did, I went and got pliers. Look at that comes right out. So we're gonna hurry and clean up. This just leaves a little bit of dross on the backside. I'm not a perfect plasma cutter person, so I know there's people out there that can program it and have none of that, but I have a lot of it. So this is how I get rid of it. And if that doesn't take care of it, we grind it. I got a song stuck in my head and it's, I can ride my bike with no handlebars. With no handlebars. I know a song that gets on everybody's nerves, everybody's nerves, everybody's nerves. I know a song that gets on everybody's nerves and this is how it goes. All right, you gotta stop that hillbilly. It's getting on my nerves. We might have to grab the welder and just tack it all together. We're gonna fit this all up. We're getting close. The tube is at six degrees, so that's gonna be our level. We're putting the top hat at six degrees. That way it's the exact same as this. We're trying to get this side all figured out. We've got to just trim off a little bit. We're trying to tuck it as far over as we can get so that we can still get our vent tube out and still get our ARB locker airline in without any interference. So you got to think ahead for clearance issues. We're going to trim off like another, that looks good, right? Oh, yep, mm -hmm. it's about that, that much right there. I'm going to mark it out and have Hillbilly cut it. And then I think we'll be good to tack it. It has to be straight, I used a square. Your line's not. It's shallower here than it is here. That is perfectly square. No, it isn't. That's perfectly square. I agree. Cut it. Good job. Here. All right. All right, we did it. We built this a top hat, low profile truss thingy majiga. Now we're gonna get this top mount figured out. We're not gonna weld it yet because we gotta weld that weld. Then we gotta grind that weld and we'll put that over top of it. But we're gonna see if it's gonna work. So we've got the Pinion angle set at six degrees again. Gonna get this shoved into place. Cool thing about no belly filming is he can assist me with his hands. I think this is gonna work actually like really well. All right, so we've got it set. We've got it length, lengthened. Everything's gonna work right where we want it. It's tomorrow, we're gonna weld this. We'll grind it. We'll put this over. This is gonna act as a gusset. We're gonna weld it all the way around. Then we'll put this back on and we'll weld it to the axle. Then we'll have us a top link. But super late, hillbilly's tired, so it is tomorrow. All right, so what is the next day? And as you can see behind me, my buddy Danny. So he came down to help us for a day. Well, what I've done is I went ahead, so I cut the plate off that was holding the bracket to it so that we could get it down a half an inch. Now, did we need to? Probably not, but aesthetically, it's gonna look very pleasing and I'll be able to sleep at night now. We've got Bleep and Colt coming and he's gonna be putting gears in that old Bronx star right there and another secret bill, but you don't get to see that yet. So you'll have to stay tuned, but he's gonna be here tomorrow. So we gotta prepare for it. So we got a lot to do. All right, so I've got the top tacked in place. So we took the upper truss off. Now what I'm doing is I'm being out the backside so that I can put a weld on the inside so it's fully penetrated. Then I'll weld it in this bracket. We'll get it put back on. We'll fully weld it to the tubes. Then we're gonna drop that axle out, get all our brackets done so that we can get some wheels and tires on this thing. All right, so I set it up in my jig and I got it all welded. I did all downhill welds. We're gonna let this sit and cool down. We're gonna put it back on the axle, weld it up, get that axle out and fully penetrate everything. So we're gonna do a sweet little montage where we just show you the work.
We're doing a personnel change. I got the outside all welded. So Danny's gonna go in and finish welding all the insides of the brackets, put our tops on. While he's doing that, I'm gonna be putting in the bump stuff. All right, so we've got this all welded up. Danny took care of the rest of the welding that we needed to get done. So we're gonna lower the frame down, let it cool for a minute, and then get these control arms in. Then we're gonna set it to full bump. All the way out, we're gonna strap it, lift it up, and put the tires on this thing so it's mobile. Pretty excited about. It's taking a long time to get to this point. Look at that, full bump. And we have clearance here, clearance here. Fully bumped out on a platform. Look at that clearance there. It's almost like we knew what we were doing. All right, so we've got this all strapped up. We're gonna get the tires thrown on it real quick. Get this thing rolling and show you what it looks like in just a second. All right, so we've got the, the nuts taken off that they had on for shipping. That kept the rotors together so nothing was moving on the fusion axles. We're gonna get this lifted. Danny's gonna sit and watch and push on a tire and then I'll stop the lift. All right, so we've got the tires in place. Now we're gonna move the jack stands to jack, and this thing is gonna be a rolling frame. Danny's gonna let it down, and this will be the first look on all four wheels. It's rolling. Yay! All right, there you have it. We've got our JK as a rolling frame. So I'm pretty excited about it, but it's Sunday, and we came in on our day off, so I'm gonna get back on this tomorrow. We'll get it moved around, get the Bronx Star over here, then we'll start putting the struts in this and getting the front and rear end disassembled so the bleep and Colt can come and help us put gears in it. So, it is tomorrow. All right, it is the next morning, and look who's back. We let Hillbilly take the weekend off. Did you see what I did? I did. Yeah, me and Danny got the whole front end done. No, because you still had your gussets. No, I decided not to. So, it's done. If that rips off, we'll re-engineer it. But as of now, that is engineered correctly. Hillbilly is gonna get this taken out, swapped with the Bronco, and he's gonna get this lifted because bleeping Colt's on his way. He's gonna be here any time. No pressure, Hillbilly. All those are easy. I've tore many axles I'll... apart. All right, how long is it gonna take you? Tops, hour and a half. Okay, hour and a half. Start the timer now. No. Okay. Not we'll now, because like, right. the vehicles are out. Sounds good. Well, that's case, I should have said two hours to hack our food and stuff around. It's fair, you're the one that set the time limit, not me. You're the one that said starting now after I set time limit. Okay, hour and a half is on the clock. All right, guys, I'm getting Robbie's JK pushed out so I can get the Bronco pushed over, and I'm putting the JK in where the Bronco's at. We need the lift, Challenger's lift, to lift the Bronco Star up so we can get the gears and lockers put in the Bronco Star's axles. Now onto the Bronx Star. Now I have to grab the Badlands high lift jack so I can get it centered in between the lift because it doesn't like to steer very well. Now I gotta get the back centered and then I'll get the JK frame moved in to where the Bronx Star is sitting. Now to get the JK moved in. Now I'm gonna get the arms positioned in the Bronx Star, get it lifted up so that way I can start pulling the axles apart. Got the arms all set. Now I'm gonna go up about yay high so I can test make sure it's stable because you can't put them as wide as I would like to because the way the arms are set up, the links are set up. So I'm gonna test it. I'm gonna start pulling the wheels off and get these axles pulled, pulled apart. We're gonna get the tires all pulled off and start getting these axles stripped. We can get those new Yukon gears lockers put in. I'm not, can't remember exactly what the lockers are. So we're gonna get them all installed. Okay, to start disassembling these axles, on the back, you have eight bolts on each side. You gotta pull those. These eight bolts, pull the axle shaft out. Go to the other side, do the same thing. And then you got rear differential cover bolts. You gotta pull those, pull the cover off. And there's four bolts on each side. There's two bolts on each side. You undo those two, uh, so four bolts total, you undo those, and the gears fall right out. Burnt gear oil stinks. Gear oil in general stinks, but when it's old, it smells worse. Now I'll go get the other side done, and then I'll bring you back when I'm starting to do the rear differential cover and the gears. Here's the gears and lockers. The lockers are Yukon Grizzly lockers. So thanks, Yukon. I really like them. We're gonna get them installed, and once we get the Bronx Star done, we'll go out and play, with the, play and have fun with them. Got the rear axle shaft on the passenger side pulled out. It's draining what's left of the uh, gear oil in there. Now I just gotta remove 
Uh, rear differential cover, which there's one, two, three. It's supposed to be 12, but one, I don't know if it's broke or just missing. We've got to figure that out. If it's broke, we got to get it extracted. If it's missing, we got to replace it. So either way, we got to replace it. So you got a bolt here, bolt here, bolt here, bolt here. Once you remove those, all the gears will fall out, but we also got to get the worm gear unbolted off the yoke. So that way we can pull it out also, because when you change your gear, Ratio, you gotta change your worm gear or else they don't line up. You'll never get them bolted in. So I'll find out what size these four bolts are and find out what size the front pinion bolt is. And once I find the sizes, I'll bring you guys back and show you how to remove them completely. Right here's the front pinion nut and it's the size is 29 millimeter. Get it pulled off. It's all off. Now the rear differential gears, the bolt, these four bolts is a 21 millimeter. Gonna pull the bearing cap off. Now it's time to pull these out. Maybe. Looks like I'm gonna have to grab a pry bar because it's not just wanting to pop out. Something's locking them in. I've never had them stick like this. Let's try a slide hammer and see what it does. Oh, moved. It's moving. That's a good sign. And it's out. The worm gear. So I got the back all disassembled, the back rear axle all disassembled. Now I'm gonna work on the front and get that one tore apart because that one's a lot more difficult than the rear. So on the front axle, a little bit harder because you have a lot more stuff. Well, in order to get your axle shafts out to pull your gears out, you have to pull these bolts, which is your hub bolts, or to hold your uh, four wheel drive locking hub in, pull that out, then you gotta dis uh, take all the nuts and bearings out, then you gotta take the brake off, and you slide the whole knuckle, or the wheel bearing off, the spindle off, and then you gotta take the backing plate off. There's a lot to it. There's the brake caliper, there's the rotor. Now to get the front hub all disassembled, I had to break out my bigger bit set, get that front cover pulled off so it can start draining because I don't want to have to wait for it to be done draining to pull the gears out. Drop the steering out of my way. I have one more bolt left. It's an Allen wrench and it's all smashed up. So I'm gonna grab my pliers and get it pulled out. Tell you what, you guys want a really good pair of pliers? Nitpex. Me and Robbie, hands down, are the best pliers we've ever used. They grip anything. Then they also have a pair that's a, like a flat. There's no teeth in there. They're just so amazing. I recommend you guys to get a set if you do much use with pliers. Getting the RTV broke free. Now I just let it drain. I'm gonna have to clean all this out. When we put it back together to put fresh grease in there. But you got a spring right here. So what I like to do is I lay out a paper towel, lay the parts on them in order that you pull them out. So lock ring first, and then you stack off that. So that way when you put it back together, you need Take off the top of the pile, put it in, and just keep doing it from that way. I just pulled out a couple washers. All I got left is four bolts for the wheel bearing. Pop that off, and this axle shaft will slide right out, in theory. Not always does it work like that, in theory. Now hopefully, this just pops off. Broke free, but still being a pain. All right, there's the wheel bearing. So it's done. Let's slide this keeper out. Now the axle is loose. That seal, that was fighting me real bad. There's one side completely disassembled. These spider gears are ready to fall out. Once I undo the bolt, of course. So this is what it's like at Robbie Layton's. He asked me if I would put gears in the Bronco. There's nobody here. Like, show up, do some stuff, but we're all gonna leave and be gone. <laughs> You're welcome, Robbie. Don't tell your friends you know how to do gears. It's a horrible, horrible thing to tell them. Hillbilly showed up, he's gonna help me do some stuff. We still don't know where Robbie is, he's just gone. He said I was gonna go get lunch. That was like two hours ago. We got this, uh, the shim here. This actually is the shim. This is an oil sling shim on a high pinion. 
and that's what keeps the oil up in the pinion bearings basically. So we have a new one, Yukon sent us a new one, but one of the things you always wanna check and people always forget to check this, right here on a high pinion you have this pocket and right in here you can stick your finger in there and I can actually feel dirt and grime and all kinds of nasties right there because this part never gets cleaned out. So we need to get in here and take a rag and shove it in that oil pocket so we can get all that stuff cleaned out. That is sparkly, shiny, not good, would ruin your bearings quick. Taste it. See how it tastes good. Taste my finger. No. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that, not good. Yummy. This right here is why I like Yukon gears. This comes with a new set of Yukon gears. This is basically your gear installation Bible. It has all the breakdowns, all the torque specs. It even actually shows you how to set up your gears as far as what pattern you're looking for. So if you're ever trying to do this, this is why Yukon's the one to go to right here. Torque specs, even if your pinion's too far away or too close or how to set them up. It's 19 pages, so if you can read 19 pages, you'll have a pretty good understanding of what you need to do gears. Does it have just pictures in color? <laughs> it does have pictures, but they don't pop out. Well, then I'm just well. <laughs> I guess I gotta stop talking crap now that he showed up. You're talking crap? Oh, all the time. Fine, it's worth it. <laughs> I'll accept, I'll accept the crap talking on this one. So all gears come with a coating that helps keep them from getting rusty or anything like that, but you wanna make sure you clean all that stuff off, especially on the back side where it faces up onto the, onto the actual locker or onto your carrier so that that's gonna seat up good. And then you wanna get your teeth good so your pattern will run out good. Now that we got the ring gear cleaned up, we're gonna go ahead and put it on the locker. We have a Yukon Grizzly locker, and I am just starting to get them all snugged up, and then we'll torque them up to 65 foot-pounds. Always, always do ring gear bolts with red Loctite, though. If you're using red Loctite, why don't you just grab the welder and tack each bolt down? Because that's about what red Loctite is. If you ever wanted to change your gears again, that would kind of suck, but. The weld's easier to break than the red Loctite. <laughs> So when you're pulling the pinion, you come up right over the pinion. When you're pulling the bearing off of the carrier, then you need basically an imitation pinion in there to do it. And you always want to keep the race on it. And then you have your clamshells, then you clamp down on there. You just want this bad boy on there. All these fancy Yukon tools. So do we have to reuse these bearings? Or is there shims you're getting to? I'm just getting to the shims because I need to know this is the best way to get your setup point is to take your old shims and then check it to what, what, what they are. And that's kind of how you can know what you need for your new carrier, at least give you a starting point. So that's what we wanted right there. So don't get them mixed up and remember how they go. Yeah, this is the ring gear side. This ring guy. gear side, that's axle shaft. Ring gear, axle shaft. Wouldn't this be ring gear side? Cause the ring gear's right here. The ring gear's on this side. No, it drops off the bottom. So that means this side's ring gear. No, yeah. that's carrier side. Ring gear is on the bottom ring side. Ring on this half of the carrier. But it's on the bottom side of the carrier. I think, so you're, getting, this I think piece, you're getting twisted up. If you split this in half, what side is the ring gear on? In the center, so it's gonna be- No, the ring gear's on this side. <laughs> Are you sure you know what you're doing? So I think you're getting stuff mixed up. <laughs> well, that's the case, I'll just leave and let you guys do it. <laughs> as long as it holds up the rock crawl, I'm not going, I don't, I'm not planning on doing over 60 miles an hour. Plan, I don't even plan on doing 50. I don't know if these gears will allow us to go over 60. Another good reason to, to have the old shims off the old carrier is so that you will know exactly the amount of preload. It should be, these carriers should be the same, so your preload should be the same inside the, the actual housing of the axle. Hopefully. Man. Such a tiny little carrier for a big old housing. The old Dana 44 and the Dana 60. See those tubes flexing? Yeah. <laughs> In your home. There you go. Got it. Power swinging it. So what are you doing now? We are gonna check for backlash. And what's that? That is the gap between the ring and the pinion. Basically the slack. So now we need to run a pattern. Yukon sets us up perfect for that. We can just put the marking compound. He's like, hey, I'm gonna bite some marking compound, then we can mix it up right there. It's like a target. Now you need <laughs> some gear oil? Yep, you wanna add a little gear oil to, cause it's pretty thick. See? Now he's eating some marking compound. <laughs> 
the marking compound is going to let us know exactly what this pattern is doing. If our, even though we got the right backlash, we have ten thousandths backlash. We want to make sure that the pinion's not too deep or too shallow next to the ring gear. Start off just going slow. I'll keep a little tension on the ring gear here. Go ahead, just like that. Okay, now go the other way. One more. Right there, that's good. That's actually a really good looking pattern. So the perfect pattern is basically an oval in the middle of your ring gear. If it's sharp on one side or the other or in and out, that's where you're gonna see your differences. You have your coast side and you have your drive side. So basically, as this thing's coming around, it's turning in here and grabbing the gear and putting it on the drive side. The coast side is what creates your howling noise. So if your coast side looks bad, but your drive side looks good, the odds are your ring gear may howl some. Like you may actually hear a whoo -woo -woo -woo. That's the best sound effect, whoo -woo -woo. I don't know. <laughs> see, you could play with it a little bit and see if you can change that and keep a good drive side and a good coast side. Another trick too is peeking up into your pinion gear and you can see if it's like right in the middle of that pinion, then you know that your teeth are making the best contact in the center of the pinion. If it's way up in the front of the pinion or on the back of the pinion, then you know you're in the wrong spot. Yep, looks like yellow paint on my ring gear. <laughs> <laughs> Acceptable patterns are all right here. This is basically what we're looking at right there. Like we have a pretty solid coast and drive side. So now that we got an acceptable pattern, now we get to take it all back out so we can put in our crush sleeve and our pinion seal and then retorque these, put Loctite on these and retorque these correctly as well. Why didn't we do that all from the beginning? Was Because it, 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 it has an acceptable one, so why didn't we just do that right now? And Because <laughs> if it wasn't right, the odds of you getting that out without messing up that pinion seal are almost nil. And then you'd also probably, then you crushed your crush sleeve and then now it's already been pre -decom like pre-compressed and you don't want to reuse it. Well, that's why you should just look ahead in time and see that it would have an access acceptable <laughs> one so we wouldn't have to tear it all back apart. Yeah, we need to build a time machine for gears. People are probably going to say, why are you prying on the, on the teeth? You're going to break a tooth off. Well, I've done this a hundred times and I've never broke a tooth off, so. There we go. Oi! If you get that out by just hammering on it, you're really hitting hard. Is it moving? <laughs> yes, yeah, moving. Jeez. I'm trying to break Did you put Loctite on that too? <laughs> there we go. Save the bearing. Okay. And the number one most important thing is making sure you put your crush sleeve back in before you put your bearing and then your pinion seal. How many times I have put a pinion seal in and then been like, oh, I forgot the crush sleeve or oh, I forgot the bearing. And some axles don't take a crush sleeve. Some of them you have to actually set up your pinion, but this will set the uh, preload on the gears. All right, so it is the next day. You didn't see a lot of me yesterday because I was in the office. Office. Yeah. I have to run a shop also. But anyway, Colt's gonna be back today. They're gonna be getting this front end and rear end all buttoned up, get these gears put in. Patterns are looking awesome. Gonna get that buttoned up, get the rear all set up, get it in. Meanwhile, I've gotta go paint today. I'm not gonna see much of me here in a minute. I'll be back as soon as I get the gears in. So come back when the job's done. Yeah, like a blister. Show up when the work is finished. We also wanna say thank you to Yukon Gear and Axle and to USA Standard Gears for sending us all the parts that we need for this Dana 50 front end and our 10 and a quarter rear end. They hooked us up up there. So if you guys need anything, head over to yukongears.com. It'll be across the screen if, in case I got it wrong. And get your guys' axles tuned up. Get some Grizzly lockers, 538 gears, whatever you need. They have it all and it's super simple to put in. Check this out. They've got a book so anybody can install gears. I'm gonna be doing another project where I read this book and install gears myself. So Colt's gonna be here today to help out, get these set up, teach us the tricks and all that stuff so that we can do another set of gears ourselves. Hopefully we don't mess it up. And when he says, us, he means me because he's gonna be paint. I mean us. There's no I in us. There's no us and I either. <laughs> All right, so while Hillbilly and Colt are working on the Bronx Star, I'm in here painting. So we got dinner slinging the camera. What up, guys? So we're gonna get this thing based out and then get it cleared. I've already blow tack and static it, I've sealed it, and now I'm on base. <laughs> All right, we're gonna let this flash off for eight minutes, come back in, get it rebased, then we'll put down some clear. Let's go see what Hillbilly and Colt are up to. I'm trying to find stuff to do. Why I wait for Cole to get here, because here it is, 
almost 9.30. So it is 9.30 now. And look who finally decides to show up to work. I'm not a paid employee. And I was waiting for you to get parts. They just showed up. <laughs> and you know what they say about excuses. And that's a very big one. All right, so I've got it all based out. We're gonna get this blow tack and static and get some clear done. All right, it's time to get the gloss off put down. We got the first coat of clear on it. We're gonna let this sit for five minutes. I'll come back in, get a second round on it, and then we'll bring you back in and show you. Thanks, dinner. We're gonna let dinner go get some fresh air. All right, so we got one coat of sealer, two coats of base, two coats of clear, and this is the end result. Turned out pretty good. Black is super hard because it shows everything. So there's a few specks of dirt. We're gonna get those buffed out in a couple of days, get this thing put back together. But we got some Bronx Star gears to get finished up. Or at least I gotta go see what they're doing on it and I'll let them finish. So let's get back to work in there. Got the hole drilled and tapped. So now I just gotta spray some brake cleaner down the active tube, get any of the shavings from drilling and tapping it out of there because we don't need that getting into the bearings because it will destroy bearings. So Hillbilly pulled this out and the bearing was off and I asked him if he pulled the bearing or did something weird, he said no. I went and set this on there and the bearing just went back down. So it's like they kept their setup bearing when they set the gears up, but your setup bearing is one that you actually hone out the inside um, so you can slide it on and off to set up your gears. But it's like they kept it. If I can just do that with the bearing, I just slid the bearing on and off with my hand. Well, that's what you want, isn't it? <laughs> make we got a setup bearing now for Sterling. <laughs> make life easier. <laughs> so the bearing is a Timken USA, a 49219. The race is a Timken, Timken Canada. So I got it all cleaned out. It was horrible. There was metal shavings stacked up almost a quarter of an inch inside the axle tubings on both sides. Got them all cleaned out, got the surface all cleaned up and ready for silicone when we're to that point. It's coming along and we're getting there. It will be done soon, I'm hoping, very soon. Okay, go the other way. Right there, stop. Right here you can see that we got a decent coast side, but the but the drive side is too deep. So our pinion is too deep. Our backlash is good, but our pinion is too deep. So we're gonna go ahead and put the pinion back out a little bit. This is where gears get punked. <laughs> it's heavy. <sighs> well, now we have 18 thousandths backlash instead of 8 thousandths backlash. So now we're gonna have to move the ring gear over back closer to the pinion to get that eight, you know, six to 12 thousandths backlash that we want. This is why nobody ever wants to do gears. Except you, you like to do them. <laughs> So your number one concern when you're putting in gears is always gonna be the drive side of that, of that pattern on the ring gear. Your secondary is your coast side, but if your coast side looks really bad, even though your drive side looks good, you may wanna work on it just a little bit. Cause like I said, the coast side is what creates the howling noise. But as long as your drive side's good, that's where it's at. In this case, now that we've moved everything and got it back in, this thing looks beautiful. We got a perfect oval on that drive side. Now you get to take it all back apart so we can put it back in right. Final assembly. Gears are so fun. This should be the final assembly. <laughs> Perfect world. You're pulling gears in and out three times if you're doing them. So we got everything out. Now we're doing a final assembly. I'm just going to show you guys the pattern on this one so you can see what a good pattern should look like. This is your drive side right here. We have a nice good oval right there. Here's your coast side right here and it's centered out in the middle. And so this is your important one on this on this low pinion setup is your drive side. We have a nice good oval and everything's centered up. It's going to be great. You can always also look at the pinion and see that you have, see that it's in the center of the pinion and it has a good fat contact patch there. So we win. Good job. Now we just gotta put it together.
again. Hopefully the last time. <laughs> the last time. <laughs> Got it all tore down, cleaned up, so it's not dirty, rusty, and greasy. It's all shiny and ready to be painted if we want to paint it. You're still dirty, rusty, and greasy though. From that. <laughs> now I just got to do the knuckles, which for those who want to cheat, I'm just going to uh, pull the ball joints out, which I'll show you guys how to do one. Then I'm throwing them in the sandblaster and making it fast and easy. That's going to be at a later time. We're going to get back to building the axles. Okay, so now I'm going to remove the ball joints out of this. Top one is just pressed in. The bottom one actually has a C-clip. Take snap ring pliers, put them in the two little holes, separate it. Pop it off. That's what snap ring looks like. Throw it away. I gotta pop the bottom one out first because I can't get to the top one because you have to slide the threads through the bottom ball joint hole. So you gotta pop the bottom one out first. All right, inside the death machine here. Okay, at this point we actually have the, we've already set the preload with the crush sleeve. I used the old nut to do that. And now I put the new nut back on and now we can test it here. Now there's a couple ways you can test it. You can use one of these old school thoughts of processes or you can use the old dial indicator style, but we need to get about 20 to 35 inch pounds for this Sterling axle. And that is right at 28 on that one going one way and 20 going the other. Let's try it with this one and see how good this, the old dial indicator works. That showed 25. We're good to go. We have the right amount of preload on our pinion bearings. Now we can put the carrier back in and this job is done, son. Last time of carrying this big old heavy tank in here. Up there getting a workout? Yeah, it's his arm day. It's definitely arm and shoulder day today. Never let your friends know you know how to do gears. <laughs> You put them in, take them out, put them in, take them out. How many times? This one's like on six. Done. <laughs> Would you look at that? Wow. This is the first thing I've ever geared or like, like other than like derby car stuff. Yeah. I've never done four wheel drives. I've never had lockers. I've never, never had any of this. And this isn't even mine. This is Hillbillies. Man, I'm kind of excited about this thing. All right, so after two days of not helping, they've got it all done. They were able to put 538 Yukon gears and a Grizzly locker up front and a Grizzly locker in the rear. I don't know how it went other than it's done. You still need to break them in. You have to break Actually, them in? Actually, break them in, not break them, break them in. Okay. <laughs> so that's the break-in procedure, flat on the floor? Yes. Yeah. Full get some right out of the parking lot. Well, good thing this motor doesn't have any get some. Yeah. Yes, it or, does. Or we'd be in trouble. Oh, yes, it does. There's a hole in the parking lot to show it does. Once you get everything done and filled, go ahead and run them, put it in four wheel drive and run them, you know, about 15, 20 miles an hour and just let it run for about 30 minutes or so. Oh, just on the cool lift. Off. Yeah, and then just oh. let it cool off and then go out and then drive it. And that'll break in the, the gears good. And just get everything hot, let it cool off again and then you're good to go. Well, this is way above my pay grade. I want to thank Colt from Bleep and Jeep and Yukon Gear and Axles and USA Standard Gears for all the stuff that we got to put these axles together. This is going to be a cool machine. We're going to have this hopefully running and driving and crawling for Easter Jeep Safari, which is where we're going to meet up with Colt next. And hopefully by then, Hillbilly doesn't break it. So we got the Dana 50 all center all put together. We still have to put the axles in, but we're putting new U joints and ball joints in it. So that's going to be later. The rear is all put together other than the axle shafts. They basically just go in, get bolts, and the cover goes on. The rear is much easier easier than the front, but I've been waiting for Colt to come down because I want to show him my JK build. I want to get his opinion on it. So this is our 2010 JK frame. We've got Fusion, we've got a Fusion Dana 60 and a Fusion Dana 80 rear. It's all Genrite suspension. You actually helped us with Genrite. Thank you for that. Yeah, last time I saw your JK, it was burned down crisp at my house. Yeah, that's when we pulled in <laughs> to South Dakota and we went and showed it to him. So this thing's pretty cool. Yeah, sitting on 42 inch BF Goodrich. We got our KMC 20 inch wheels. This thing's pretty sweet, but we're struggling on it because every single person in the world has a JK. Now I've got a super capable chassis. It's gonna get a 6 OLS. I've got an Atlas transfer case. It's gonna have a 4L80, but man, I'm struggling putting a JK body back on it. Well, you know, when you were off playing in La La Land, you know, uh, Hillbilly and I took a break and I said, hey, I wanna see that back that back 40 of Robbie's. He's like, yeah, I'll show you around. 
You got a pretty sweet Toyota back there that I think would be pretty rad on this thing. You think? Uh, yeah. The reason why I think it's awesome is it'll make the whole world mad if they're a purist. <laughs> so we're roughly 10 feet. We're at about 118 inches. That sounds about right. So 46 inches. Three foot 10. So we're gonna go out and we're gonna do some measuring on this FJ55 Toyota Land Cruiser. You guys have never seen this, so let's go take a look. All right, so for about a year, We've been storing this. It's a 1976 Toyota Land Cruiser FJ55. It's like the perfect family haul and wagon. But we gotta see if it'll, it'll fit. fit on top of a JK frame. I'm 10 foot here, so we could. Oh yeah. Perfect. We could we could fix an arch back here and not even go into the door. Right. Alright, let's see how wide it is. Look at that seat. Dude, it's look at that. It's got the spare tire. It's got the spare tire tools. Oh look at that. The seat oh, perfect. In pretty good shape. <laughs> Here, extra spiders and Let's all. See. Oh, oh, look at that. There's nothing wrong with that. House, house. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Four feet's in there. So let's go inside wheel well to wheel well. Oh, dude. This is like almost perfect. It's like it was made to go on a JK frame with one tons and 42s. You know what's rad about this? Hmm. The, the stripes. You gotta bring the stripes back. So if we put this on a JK frame, should we put those cool stripes back on it? You'll have to let us know in the comments. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? No. You hate it? Yeah. All right, fine, I love it then. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't own this, Hillbilly's grandpa does, so we're gonna give him a call and see if he wants to come down and make a deal on it. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's a brand new carburetor on there. <laughs> this thing's factory. Oh look, it's even got a half decent battery. Think it runs? It ran and drove before I, when I was done working on it-ish. You were, you got it to run and drive? It's got brake fluid in it, you think it's brakes? Yeah. It stopped when I needed it, to. It go to end. Did you really drive it? it? Yeah, like a month or two after Grandpa got it. Oh, that's cool. What is that? Factory Toyota, bro. Oh, serious? Yeah. Oh, factory Toyota, bro. <laughs> that's pretty cool. So at least, at least if it runs and drives, we can pull the drivetrain out and sell it. I'll bet there's a purist out there that would like FJ55 drivetrain. We're gonna have a swap meet. So you're gonna you're gonna need it to get this body back up and get. Yeah, shit. yeah. This body is rough. If we make a deal on this, we're gonna have to find some fenders, lots of stuff. So give Grandpa a call, see if he'll come down, make a deal. I like it. I think it's beautiful. And look, it's got the grill. It's got major potential. Potential. I think it's gonna be fun. It beats the heck out of that JK body. Hey. I don't know about the dash. The gauge is like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, your visor is still in good shape. <laughs> look at that. Everything. Look at that. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> oh, cool. Ah. Yeah, so this is a 1978 FJ55 Toyota Land Cruiser. And this is the owner. We call him Grandpa. He'll really got a hold of him, got him down here. We're going to try to try to get his baby out of him. So tell us about him. What do you know about your sweet, clean, one owner, <laughs> daily driver, <laughs> hot rod? I don't know a lot about it, Max, but Teal Bailey did a lot of work on it. So what are you saying? He said it was running and driving. So we could move some crap out of here and probably drive in the shop. Yeah, move a few things. There's just a couple <laughs> things in the way. He thinks it'd be about as easy as getting the balls off the mountain. We could bring a telehandler in and lift it, lift it over the fence. <laughs> but how long have you owned it? I mean, it's been in my couple, possession probably years. half its life. It's lived in my tow yard, and I didn't even know it was back here. Yeah. You're the one told me to put it mind. here. <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. I forget. Out of sight, out of mind. Does that mean the other vehicle you got from Grandpa? Is that, you forgot about it too? Yeah. The one over there. Oh, yeah. I do have another one that I got from him too. It's like he's just passing all the stuff down to me to store. <laughs> We're not going to tell you why we need it, but we need it. You want to sell it? Yeah, I don't think. Uh... I don't have any luck getting it out of here and fixing it up. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to move a couple things <laughs> to get it out of here. <laughs> so what do you think you need out of it? Oh, probably about a thousand. I was thinking like 200. 200? It's like, it's rough. A thousand bucks is kind of a lot. How about what I paid for it? How much you pay for it? 25. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going up? <laughs> now we're going up in price. 300. <laughs> 300 Got a new carburetor price. on it. Got a cleaned out fuel tank, but I think you probably need to move Somewhat it. cleaned out. There's a lot of varnish buildup in there. The fuel lines will need to be replaced because they're full of varnish too. Well, if you paid 300 and we know Hillbilly's labor isn't cheap, how about we do 350? Sounds fair to me. Cool. 
I'd like to see somebody uh, get it and well, run it up the mountain or something. Why don't we take him inside and show him what we want to do? Okay, that's a deal. We're going to buy this 1978 Toyota FJ55 Land Cruiser. <laughs> 350 bucks. Thank you. <laughs> Rock crawl in. Isn't that a little sacrilegious? Bleeping Jeep in a Toyota? <laughs> No, nah, that's okay. I appreciate cool stuff. <laughs> hey, look, we got the extendo door for the bigger guys. <laughs> it opens all the way up. Extendo out. So now that we've made the deal with Grandpa, we're buying the FJ55. Now we're gonna let him in on the secret that we decided. Guess what we're gonna do with the new Land Cruiser in this box? <laughs> so I wanna introduce you to the world's greatest 1978 Toyota FJ Cruiser Land Cruiser rock crawler. We're gonna take that Land Cruiser and put it on this JK frame. You are? Yeah. And it's going to be amazing. It's going to be so cool. Grandpa's doubting us. I don't us. know why you'd put something that old on a body for a rolling chassis like that. Think about how cool that's going to be. Everybody and their dog has a 2010 JK. Nobody and their dog has. You tell me, you tell me one person that has a rock crawler FJ55 Land Cruiser. We're putting a Toyota body on a Jeep. And it's going to be sweet. So now that we're buying his daily driver, the FJ55, he's got to get his old truck fixed. So he's got a 2014 Duramax. So if anybody knows where a TCM for a 2014 Duramax is, let us know. Send us an email. So we'll put a link right here and in the description. So if you guys have a TCM for a 2014 Duramax, let us know so we can get grandpa back on some wheels now that we've bought his. You gotta put these somewhere on the Bronco at some point. Does Colt approve? Colt approves. Okay, Colt approves of the Bronx Star and so do I and so should you. As always, we appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, go check out this one. <laughs> <laughs>